this week's Southwest District Health Board meeting didn't really amount to much. No decisions or mandates were made, but it did stir up a debate among Treasure Valley residents and our viewers, some local, some not. During that three hour meeting on Tuesday, Adams County Commissioner Vicki Purdy brought up the malaria drug hydroxychloroquine and how they should be pushing it as part of a protocol to treat COVID-19. She claimed there was a quote tsunami of studies that show it works. However, as we pointed out that day, there's more evidence that shows otherwise, and even those that show the use of hydroxychloroquine to battle COVID-19 can cause heart, kidney, or even liver problems. When we asked Commissioner Purdy about her research, she sent us an email and a link to a Frontline Doctor Summit website. The same frontline doctors whose credentials have been questioned and their website removed. Also in her email, Commissioner Purdy said there are thousands of doctors all over the country that could give us a better interview on hydroxychloroquine than she can. So we asked one. Dr. Sky Blue is an infectious disease specialist who works with St. Luke's and several other hospitals in the Valley. We thought we would take Commissioner Purdy's claims to him to find out if they were true and get a breakdown on how we got here with hydroxychloroquine. We were totally on board with hydroxychloroquine early on. You okay. know, when we saw this as a, a new disease coming out, you know, we were grasping at straws as well. And very early on, there was some, you know, data coming out of China saying, uh, yeah, hydroxychloroquine might have some effect. Um, it was really what I call dirty data because, you know, basically they were throwing everything at it to see what would stick. Our treatment protocols at that stage pretty much gave hydroxychloroquine to everybody uh, in the hospital. So we were using it. Then as it started to be used pretty widely, we started seeing these retrospective reports, meaning that they look back at who was given this hydroxychloroquine. So as the retrospective data started to come in, it didn't look quite as good as um, you know, initial. So, and also there was uh, reports of harm from it as you give it to a wide, uh, wider group and an increasing number of them. You know, what we really need is a randomized controlled trial, you know, the kind that looked forward and had a placebo arm or somehow, you know, controlled for those uh, areas of bias. And as those randomized control trials started to come in, uh, it was really not showing the benefit that we wanted uh, with that. At that stage, you know, in my mind, this shifted to the burden of proof saying that, you know, we don't want to do harm. You know, we've had randomized control trials now that aren't showing the benefit. The FDA says that this is not, you know, meeting the standards of them to have an EUA. And so at this stage, you know, that um, that's kind of where we're at. Dr. Blue says there have been a lot of smaller trials done with maybe 48 patients here, another 150 patients there that have shown benefits. But he says even those studies contain biases like the use of zinc or not. The idea that, well, you're not giving it with zinc, you, the ones, Henry Ford wasn't using zinc. The ones that are looking at zinc then aren't looking at the no therapy at all. And often the ones who are getting zinc are the ones who are healthy enough to say, hey, I want zinc and, you know, I can take this supplement, et cetera, uh, or they're outpatient only. And that's where you have a really low mortality anyway. And if you're just comparing those to historical controls, what happened in the past, this disease changes on a month to month basis. That's a good point. So, you know, a week to week basis basic stance right now after you walked us through this timeline, but where we're standing right now is that the benefits don't outweigh the potential for harm when it comes to proven this. benefits have not outweighed the potential for harm. And if you're giving it to a very large number, very early in infection, they're a lot less likely to be hospitalized or die from it. So those potential harms loom pretty large. Bottom line is St. Luke's is not using this treatment. Uh, we do not have it as a recommended in a protocol. So in fact, our uh, protocols at St. Luke's say, you know, we recommend against using it. 
uh, because the data is not conclusive of benefit over harm. Uh, we don't say you can't use it. Uh, we just say that it is not recommended from our review uh, and it is now not authorized under the emergency use authorization for the FDA for that. And what about the claims that there's a big money conspiracy to stop people from using it? Dr. Blue says that's just not the case. They have the drug to use, but nobody is paying them to not use it. It feels like everybody wants this thing solved right now, and they will grab anything that seems to fit that bill. Sure. Well, I'm, I'm right on there, too. You know, I, I'm, I like to look at anything that, that seems to help. Um, but when we start to have things that say, well, it doesn't help uh, and may cause harm, then I'm looking for something else. You know, it's funny to me that it's the exact same people who say don't wear a mask. When that is the, the kernel that even helps prevent this with a lot less side effects than what we're talking about with hydroxychloroquine and zinc, and probably even cheaper still. And if there was a, a big pharma that was behind trying to keep us from using hydroxychloroquine, I'm not sure why they wouldn't be, you know, um, squelching mask use at the same time. And when I asked Dr. Blue about Commissioner Purdy's claim that people, especially minorities, should make up for their vitamin D deficiency by taking vitamin D, and would that help them fight COVID? He said, maybe. There are a lot of factors with that. Those who have deficiencies of any sort can sometimes have other health issues, and there's no data to back up that claim. Correlation, he says, does not mean causation. He said the best trials so far have had several thousand patients involved, but even the big ones have stopped the study because it wasn't showing enough effectiveness. Dr. Blue also said he and his colleagues review trials and studies every week, and so far, the consensus is the same. The benefits of hydroxychloroquine don't outweigh the risks.